Welcome to Allowed to Talk, and on the show today I want to talk about the book I wrote. Don't call me a narcissist, anything but charming by me. That's my nickname, really, but... And I'm going to read the first chapter. There's 20 chapters in this book, and I wanted it double-spaced, but they made it more like this. And you can get it on Amazon.com if you care, but I'm going to read it to you. One chapter at a time on each show. Don't call me a narcissist. Anything but charming by Katrinka Lear. I dedicate this book to anyone who has had to spend time with someone who only worships one thing, themselves. And there's 20 chapters, but the first chapter is Call Me Cruel. Don't call her a narcissist or him a narcissist. Just call them cruel, very cruel people. And then there's an introduction. This book explains things about my life and how dealing with someone who was most of the things described in the chapters of this book and how they can drive you to believe you are losing your mind. You're not delusional or living in a nightmare. This is very real and many people in the world who have empathy and are very sensitive, sensitive have had very traumatic experiences with them. This is a never-ending type of person in this world and they have to want to change if any change will happen. You can't change them. That will likely never happen. The things we can do are to protect ourselves by keeping boundaries, keeping our boundaries, and staying alert. Watching for the red flags. That was the one I missed in my show earlier. There's red flags that you can uh, be aware of. And watch for the red flags the cruel, heartless people demonstrate so well. May you heal well. Chapter 1. Call me cruel. If you think you are probably a narcissist because you have been cruel to someone for a time or two, you probably aren't, because our narcissists don't think there are one. So, if you thought you might be because you've done cruel things now and then, and someone really pissed you off. <laughs> Very cruel people don't believe they are cruel to you, much less that they are narcissists. They will go about their day being cruel, picking out every mistake or bad decision decision you make, and not bat an eye about it. They truly believe they are in the right, always. If you point out that what they have said or done to you is cruel, they will most likely ignore your statement or laugh and tell you that you are the problem. They surely, they surely are not cruel, and you are the one who is cruel for pointing out that they are cruel. Do you get my gist? I hope so. Looking for some compassion from someone I considered a very close friend, I thought of her as someone as close as a sister to me, so I confided in her about how I was upset about feeling bad that my daughter was born with meconium. My daughter was later diagnosed with dyslexia. When I talked to her, my closer than a sister friend, about having, when I talked to her, my closer than a sister friend, about how I was beating myself up about having a couple of alcoholic beverages on vacation, not knowing I was already pregnant. I was only trying for two weeks. Her answer was very cruel. I was looking for compassion, but got none whatsoever. Emo I'm getting a little bit tongue-tied here. After almost five years of being close friends, her reasoning was very cruel. Her answer was, you shouldn't have had drunk alcohol if you were trying to get pregnant. You shouldn't have done that. I honestly was expecting a kind, or at least her being nicer with her answer, something like this. Well, you only just started trying two weeks ago before your vacation, and you were only about two weeks pregnant when you went on vacation, so don't be so hard on yourself. I was shocked and hurt and felt violated by her. Help. What kind of person would say something like that? A very cruel person, for sure. Every one of us has narcissistic tendencies, but this woman was being cruel to the point of what felt like she didn't even give a hoot if I dropped dead in front of her. What happened after almost five years of a close friendship, close as sisters, that she would become such a cruel person? There were a lot of actions and words that were very cruel after the above statement from her. When we, were alone in a re when we were alone in a room, she would pick out something very dear to me and criticize it. For example, my granddaughter has her ring finger up in her newborn baby picture, 
This woman laughed out loud and in an evil tone. She proceeded to speak about the newborn picture of my granddaughter. Yet if you point out to her that her statements are heartless and cruel, she would respond by projecting it around and blaming you or stating she was just kidding around. Mind-boggling. I felt like beating my head against the wall at times. When my mom passed away, my sister-in-law's consoling words were, Well, I don't know how you are feeling because my mom is still alive. Say what? She had nothing else to say about it? When I went to get a hug from her, she was limp like a wet noodle and turned to go about what she was doing at the house. She continued straightening up her living room. My husband and I left their house shortly after, and I was dismayed, confused, and felt violated once again. When I told my husband what she did and said, he said he was not in the living room and was in the kitchen with her husband, but he was dumbfounded that she was lacking compassion about my mom passing away. I didn't know until many years later that there were people with narcissistic personalities, which is a disorder. The puzzle pieces were starting to fit. After all the years of being so close and her being so much like me, why was she being so cruel? Why was she doing the things and saying the things that I repeatedly told her would destroy me? She is a very cruel person. And that's the end of chapter one. The bookmark. The next time I read the book, it'll be chapter two. And I hope you're having a wonderful day.